You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. I'll be your host today, Trevor Wade. I'm the Coonhound Program Manager here at UKC, and I'm joined by the Director of Hunting Ops, Alan Gingrich. Alan, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Yeah, we got an exciting uh, episode on on hand today. We're going to be talking about the Top 10 Bench Show, something we both uh, put a lot of thought into over the past couple of years, and I think we're starting to to reap the benefits of of this new improved Top 10 program. So. Yeah, it's a program that's been around forever. I don't know when it started with UKC, but it's been, they've had it since I've known uh, about UKC, so right. a long time. Yeah. I'll just say that. Yeah. I buffed it up here a couple of years ago with the, with the purse, the $15,000 purse, and uh, and kind of made it a standalone show there Friday yeah. evening at, at Winter Classic, and that's when it'll be. We got Winter Classic coming up on tap. Uh, you guys probably heard us talk about the Winter Classic and the history of the event a couple episodes back. Uh and that's coming up here soon, Friday, February 10th. When you listen to this, it's just going to be a couple of days. And this show is going to be Friday evening, 6 p.m. Uh, so if you're not hunting or you're hunting locally, you may be able to hang around and watch some of it there. It'll be under the lights there on the arena floor. And it's we, we do our best to make it a big deal because it is a big deal. The top uh, bench show dogs in the country will be showing that night. It is. And it, it's made up of uh, 10 dogs in each breed and the 10 dogs that uh, defeated the most dogs throughout the calendar year yeah. actually it's not calendar it starts november 1st through october 20 or 31st that's right yep that's or 30th exactly right. however many days are in october i forget yeah i have to do that little school thing 30 days out of september april june and november <laughs> <laughs> hey well we uh and we still don't know how many days are in october i don't have a clue well 30 all right halloween is the only way i know okay we better straighten up here <laughs> We'll get the, all that the, out of the, the way. The administrators are going to make us start over here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't but, you say not so much bantering on this one? Yeah, so let's get right to it. But we, we can always cut up a little bit. So, but uh, yeah, so if you're in the show, you probably already received your certificate. You already got your entry information. There's no pre entry for the top 10 bench show. You just got to be there ringside before 1 p.m. to check in and get entered, get entered up for it. Uh, you have that in your notes and everything. But uh, good reminder here. Uh, for anybody who's coming and competing in it. And and we talked about it a little bit that revamping it back in uh 2020, uh doing the adding the purse to it, the fifteen thousand dollar purse. Uh we, we wanted to do something for the bench show participants and we had a program in place, a top ten show that that's well laid out and it just felt like if we added a little bit of incentive to it, it would work and it's working. It it is. You know, we we've had this for a long time. We've had this show, the top ten uh finals at the uh at at Winter Classic. And and it's worked well throughout the years, but what, like you said, the only thing we changed to it is basically added the awards, the monetary awards to it, and quite a bit, two thousand yeah. dollars to win your breed, and and then another thousand dollar bonus for uh, winning the overall for it. So that's that's what's at stake, and and I think just by the the number of points, the one thing I'm I'm going to find or that I find interesting that we talked about a little bit is the cutoff yeah. points for cutoff. And comparing that to uh, uh, the old days, we're going to talk about that a little bit, I think. Yeah, I, s- I say we go ahead and talk about it right now before we get into it. Yeah, well, first of all, let's let's talk a little bit. How, how does how do you earn top 10 points? What is the top 10 program? Yeah, so basically, just like you said, from November 1st to October 31st, you accrue points at events by defeating dogs in your category. Any UKC licensed bench show. That's right. So if you win, if you're grand champion male, grand champion female, champion male, champion female, best male show, best female show, depending on how many are entered into your category will be how many points you get. So if yep. you're a registered dog, you're hunting a, or you're showing a registered male dog, you get best male show. How other, how, how many other registered males are in the show you get one point per dog uh, defeated in that, in the right. registered class, move up to champion. Then how many champion males did you defeat? You get three points per champion dog you defeat. And then once you move up to grand, you get four points per dog defeated. Right. So right. it's kind of a, a steady increase. And yeah. we talked about that back in episode two, if you guys want to revert back to that and all the rules of the top 10, but it's a good refresher course for yeah. anybody who may be after hearing this, may be interested yeah. in making a run at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you talked a, bit, a little bit about the cutoffs and I think it's good here to talk about how the program has evolved a little bit. And, and we were both interested in seeing that. And, and when we talk about the top dogs and how many points they accrue, that's pretty steady throughout. You're always going to have dogs that get a lot of points by winning 
one of the major events in the year. I'm talking about Autumn Oaks Winter Classic, Grand American, where there's a bunch of like, over 100 entries in the show where you can rack up a lot of points in a hurry. But it's the the bottom of the top 10 where we're really seeing a drastic change, I think. Um, so let's just take Black and Tans, for example. This year, 50. It took 50 50 points to get you into the top 10 this year. Yeah. You know, and even just a year ago, 35 was a cutoff there. Two years ago, 24 in 2019, it was right there at 30 points for a cutoff to get in. So yeah, 20 more points, almost doubled it to get in. So it, it tells you it's working and, and there, you have more people showing, obviously. Yeah. And, and that's we'll, what that says. We'll probably talk about that with each breed as we go along here. But, you know, one thing that's going to stand true when we're going through here is that we, there's a couple different ways to make it in the top 10. First off, you show at a bunch of shows throughout the year, you travel a lot, or if you win a major a category at a major event, you got a pretty good shot. And I pulled the numbers on that. So Grand American has two shows, Friday and Saturday, one each day. So they have technically 12 category winners, but some of them won both days this past year. Eight of nine category winners from Grand American are in the top, finished in the top 10. Uh, Winter Classic, five of six category winners made it in the top 10. Uh, Autumn Oaks, five of six categories ma winners made in the top 10. So if you win a show of that magnitude, you're in a pretty good spot. You, you are because you defeated a lot of dogs in doing so, obviously. But uh, it's also, I think it's important to point out just because uh, it's not those dogs that are on the list now. You can look at the list and you can see a lot of these dogs didn't win major shows. Right. You know, so just because uh, you're competing against those dogs that might have won a category at one of the big major shows and earned a lot of points does not mean that you are out of it. That, a lot absolutely. of these dogs on this list are dogs that earn points at their local uh, UKC uh, shows Yeah, on a Friday and Saturday nights. Yeah, and we're, we're going to talk a lot about that we're, uh, when we're talking about individual dogs we're going mm -hmm. through and, and introduce every dog you're going to see in the top 10. Yeah. And we may talk about some of their wins and how they got them. Some yeah. of them may just have two or three category wins for the year. Some yeah. of them have over 30. Yeah, there's a, one other thing I want to point out a little bit or just uh, highlight a little bit. I think I feel like this program has has also uh, uh, promoted, there's, we have some folks out in the, in the show world that are uh, uh, setting up their own shows and putting a lot of effort into it. You know, Angie Cable comes to mind with hers. There's uh, numerous other shows where they're really promoting a show, and a lot of it uh, really fits in with this. Yeah. You know, and, and kudos to them. And that's just a, a hope to see a whole lot more of that. Yeah, you said somebody like Angie, somebody like Katie Woodward, yep, uh, yep. the Hogans, they're coming to mind. Even yeah. their local level events, they yep. make it feel like a bigger event, so yeah. they're drawing more entries in, and that's more top 10 points for you. If you put a little more effort into those local level shows, you can really make it worth people's while to come and compete. And they're getting paid for it. They're getting the participants, you know, and you can have, uh, there's, you know, all kinds of ideas, Christmas shows, New Year's shows, wintertime's a good time just to have just a show only. Yeah. You know, so we can we can make it as easy for them as we can as far as scheduling goes, you know. But, uh, yeah, so kudos to all those clubs and individuals that are really pushing the shows these days. Yeah. yeah, I thought A lot I, of good stuff. There. I thought before we got into individual breeds and kind of uh, recognized each dog in the top in the top ten of their breed that we talk about the top five overall leaders for the year. Uh, some really impressive numbers here. We'll, we'll get the first one right here. Uh, Skyline's push my luck. This is a, a red bone male. Beth Jenkins has been pushing this year 400 points. I yeah. went back to the last five or six years and we've had a couple in the low 300s, but I've never yeah. seen one 400 yeah. before. What a year for those two. Yeah. But you know, Beth is probably, she probably goes to more, more shows than you and I do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I guarantee I think probably it. a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, second here is a, a familiar name, Jacob Brooks, and his uh, little female English hound sideshow, Bobby Sue, two hundred and fifty-seven wow. points this year. Yeah, I just talked to him on a on an earlier podcast, different episode or whatever. We talked about Bobby Sue a little bit, but I didn't realize he had that many points. Good year for them. Yep. Uh, Nick coming in third here, two hundred thirty-one points is a plot female, Rag Mountain, sweeter than honey, owned by Katie and Jason Woodward. Yep, right there as well, right behind Jacob with Sue, two hundred thirty-one points there for Katie and Honey. Uh, 220 points in fourth. That's going to be Rockin' W Surround Sound, a blue tick male owned by Whitney and Debbie Killo in that's, Arkansas. That's one we see uh, uh, at a lot of shows, a lot of the bigger shows. They call him Dolby, I think, 220 points. And rounding out the top five there, Midnight Brindled Bonfire, a uh, plot male, won Autumn Oaks this year, owned by Scott and Connie Hogan. Yep, 216. 216 yep, he's off of world champion, I think, there. But, yeah, that's uh, there's uh, five really uh, top-notch hounds right there and, and with all over 200 points. Between four, 200 and 400 points. All right. Without further ado, let's go and jump into our first breed, the American Black and Tan Coonhounds. Uh, they had uh, their top 10 was six males and four females, ranging anywhere from 126 points to 50. And our top point, uh, 
point getter in the black and tan breed this year was champion PR Margaritaville. It's a rag top day. A three-year-old black and tan male owned by Joe Powers of Greenville, Ohio, 126 points. Yeah, he leads uh he leads that. And you know, just because they're leading here, that's it just means they're leading in the top ten. You know, it the 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 win, the breed win is decided at uh at the winter classic. Yeah. Uh but yeah, just a, a nice a good year for him. Yeah, good sure. dog out of our world champion this year, Deep South Tailgate Ten Lines. Yeah, and the female is uh, the dam is Tom Lee's black bill. And uh he was one that had a big win this year. He's a champion male at Autumn Oaks. You do something like that and add in a few more category wins throughout the year at decent size show, this is what happens. Right. Uh, number two in the black and tan breed, Grand Champion 2, Melrose Mountain, Lead Me Home. Seven-year-old female owned by Lisa and Shane Bedingfield from Flat Rock, North Carolina with 122 points. Now, this dog sired by Jack on the Rocks and off of Melrose Mountain Amazing Grace, which is a dog that Lisa had a lot, a lot of success with with, uh, with Gracie there. But, uh, yeah, just uh, uh, doing some, a lot of her own breeding. Here she is again on top of the standings here in the yeah. top 10 for black and tans. No, no points for it, but she was the reserve world champion this year at the, at our mm-hmm. world championship. Uh, she also started out the year with a bang with a couple of grand champion female selections at grand American. And that kind of put her up there and she, she kind of coasted to this uh, into the top 10 with that, but yeah. she should be hard to beat in this. Cause looking back at it, she's won the black and tan breed in the top 10, 2019, 2020, 2021, three years back to back. Yeah. Tough out. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. These next two here are going to be ones that we talked a little bit like earlier. This is maybe not major event wins, but when you look at just the amount of grand champion wins or of category wins they had through the year, that's where you get these point totals. And the first one is grand champion Hall of Fame Anderson's OK Black Chigger, a two-year-old female owned by Donnie Nioka and Cheryl Anderson of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. At 80 points this year. Yeah, this dog sired by Kentucky River uh, X Man and off of N N and M's Black Bottom Miss Joe D. 35 grand champion wins. 35 champion wins. Hey, one thing that uh, I want to come back to this, but out of Grand Night Champion Kentucky River X Man, there, here's the next one, also owned by Donnie Nioka and Cheryl Anderson of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, with 68 points. Grand champion Hall of Fame Anderson's Oklahoma Handsome Hoss, a two year old male. And this dog's out of Champion Grand Night Champion Two Scipio Kansas TJ mm-hmm. and a female named Waters Mountain Black Bella. Both sires right here are two pretty well known uh, hunting dogs. Right, more so in the right. night hunt segment yeah. than this. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and he and Hoss had twenty nine Grand Champion wins. But here's here's a, a good example of two dogs that uh, that one got most of their points just at regular shows. Yep, right there. Just traveling, mm-hmm. uh, hitting the ones close by, probably yep. on the weekends. Yep, that's it. Got in safely, easily, yep. well in the top ten. Yep. Number five, uh, champion Cobra Time 007. This is a good-looking black and tan male, a young one, two-year-old, owned by Felicia Bailey out of Prairie, Mississippi, 66 points. Yeah, uh, dog is off of Gilman's Good Time Charlie is the sire. Gilman's Small Time Scandal is the uh, dam to Cobra, or 007. I'm not sure what she calls the calls the dog, but it's a nice-looking dog, and, and Felicia, she's always such a positive person, yeah. always smiling, just always... Just has that up personality. And has some dang nice dogs. She too. sure does. Sure does. Uh, sixth place here, confirmation champion, Grand Field champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Grand Water Champion 3, Scarberry's Mark of Carbon. This is a six-year-old male owned by Colby and Robert Scarberry of Glenwood, West Virginia. 58 points. Yep. A seasoned hound veteran right here off of Shawnee Hills Shades of Carbon HTX and Scarberry's Midnight Black Gem. 17 Grand Champion wins, one of which was RQE this year. Yeah. Keep that cross in mind because I think we're going to re- see that again here in a minute. But first here, number seven is a dog that you got to put your hands on at the Grand American just recently. Uh, there's so many titles here. Uh, Misty and David, you're going to have to forgive me. I don't know what half of these mean, but <laughs> at least the confirmation grand champion, grand champion two, and a lot of, of our all breed titles. I know this dog does agility and different things. And that's Gilman's good time tradition spot. And that's a, a three-year-old black and tan male owned by David Gilman of Fielden, Illinois with 57 points. Yeah, this dog has a lot more talents than you do, Trevor. I'm telling <laughs> that's you. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's sired by uh, the Gilman's uh, good time Charlie and is off of Bear Creek. Miss Kitty is the dam. Uh, three champion wins, uh, nine grand champion wins, one of which was an RQE. Two came at Black and Tan Days and two at the Illinois State. But uh, so this dog did a lot of winning last year and, and uh, uh, just, a, just a nice hound and is number seven in the standings. In eighth place, we got confirmation champion, grand champion Hall of Fame, Scarberry's Midnight Black Ruby. This is a six-year-old female owned again by Colby and Robert Scarberry, their second one in the top ten here. 
from Glenwood, West Virginia, and uh, Ruby had 54 points this year. Yeah, and here again, uh, Shades of Carbon is the sire, and Midnight Black Gem is the dam, so they have two litter mates in the standings this year. Very Pretty cool. impressive. 20 grand champion wins, qualified for the world. This year comes in at number eight. In ninth place, we have grand champion three, Cindy's Raging Black Rebel. Two-year-old male owned by Cindy Sanders and Tommy Johnson out of Madison, Missouri, 52 points. Here again, the sires at Scipio, Kansas, TJ, and then 3G Sadie is the outlaw is the dam here. 19 grand champion wins this last year, uh, uh, two of which are at RQEs. Uh, so in, in the hunts, uh, a dog, once it's qualified, cannot enter another RQE, but in the uh, for the shows, a dog can, in fact, even though already qualified, can go back and show at an RQE, and that's what this dog do, did to you. Two RQE shows. Number nine for uh, uh, Raging Black Rebel. And rounding out the black and tan top ten is going to be grand champion Gilman's Good Time, Stella. This is a three-year-old female owned by David Gilman, uh, Fielden, Illinois, 50 points here. Uh, litter mate to, uh, to Good Time Tradition we talked about just a minute ago. Yep, there you go. Good Time Charlie's the sire. Bear Creek Miss Kitty is being the dam. So, yeah, we have a couple uh, sets of litter mates that are in the black and tan standings top ten. Five champion wins, five grand wins. One came at Black and Tan Days, and two again at the Illinois State Championship for Stella here. So that rounds up the top ten for uh, Black and Tans. Yeah, I one inter- We we got to give Gilman's Good Time Charlie here some props. Not only did he have the two litter mates, Tradition and Stella, but also the Cobra Time 007 dog was also out of Charlie. Right. Three pups in the top ten. Great job by Charlie. Absolutely. Sure mm-hmm. speaks for their breeding program they have right there. And moving on to the American Leopard Hounds, uh, there's an unbreakable tie for for 10th here, so we actually got 12 hounds that are eligible to move on to the Winter Classic to compete for the top the, the title of top 10. And I like uh, that show for winner. our tiebreakers here. Instead of having some form of tiebreaker, if you're tied for 10th, you move. You go, yeah. You're in. Yeah. You're, you're in. Yeah, and, and perfect breakdown. Six males and six females moving on. Our high dog is going to have 75, and 29 yeah. would have got you in the top 10 of a leopard i know that yeah. doesn't seem like a lot but when you compare it to last year yeah 18 you know less than 20 in pre- the previous three years so, getting yeah. more and more competitive yeah. so yeah. that's good to see especially from uh from our standpoint yeah so and the first dog here is is a name that's kind of came on the past couple of years and see him a lot of a, a major major events he's uh, competes a lot at the local level too and that's mr chuck slattery and his son lucas and they have field champion water champion confirmation champion Grand Champion 5, Soap Creek, Mr. Moose. It's a two-year-old leopard hound, and they're out of Spring City, Tennessee, and they had 75 points this year. Yeah. The dog is sired by Meeks, Georgia Cracker, and uh, the dam is Meeks, Georgia Little Ginger. They had eight champion wins this last year, 27 grand champion wins. They had one at Leopard Days, and and two of those wins came at RQEs this last year. So they're leading the whole herd of American leopard hounds uh, with 75 points, first, uh, first spot in the standing. And the next one, we got a veteran here, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, preaching to the choir. This is a nine-year-old male owned by Abby McCorkle and Jessica Warner. Abby's over in Elwood, Indiana. I know Jessica is now handling the dog, I think, over in West Virginia. And choir had 48 points this year. Yeah, this dog's done a lot of winning over the years for Abby. And uh, this dog's sired by Lakers Scar and Lakers Striking Annie. Had 12 Grand Champion wins this last year. Uh, was a top 10 breed winner in 2018. So she, he's been there and done that. We'll see if he can follow up on that. Here's a, here's a familiar name for people who have been on the, at the major events this year, as you can see the list of wins here. Champion m M&M and Southern Swirls Little Girl, a four-year-old female owned by Michael Seats and Branson Miles. Uh, Mike's in Stonefort, Illinois. 44 points this year. Yep, this dog's sired by Treetop and Solo and is off a of night champion, grand champion, c and M Southern Swirl. Southern Swirl was a big name back in the day. And... Uh, it was it wasn't long after UKC recognized the American Leopard Hound. She was already in the annual uh, Hound of the Year series and winning a lot, and won it. Just a nice, well put together dog at that Mike Seats and uh, Elburn or uh, um, Curtis. Curtis Elburn owned at the time, and Mike handled the dog. Did a lot, a lot of winning with the dog. Yeah. So yeah, this is a pup off of uh, Swirl. Yeah, and anytime you see Mike, you know he's going to be traveling to the major events. Right. Swirl had wins. Leopard Days, Tennessee, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana State Championships, a couple at Plot Days, all over the country. Yep, this dog. 44 points, third spot this year. Coming in fourth is Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, here for the party. This is a five-year-old male owned by Jenna Emery and Jackie Carpenter of Portland, Indiana, at yeah. 42 points. This is a dog that we just talked about, sired by a dog we just talked about, preaching to the choir as a sire of this dog, and the dam is Princess Polly Prissy Pants. <laughs> you like that, yeah. I guess, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've called that name out a time or two, I think, in bench shows. So, yeah, that's one of uh, Janet's females there as well. 
And that's what party is uh, sired or off of. But uh, six grand champion wins, two came at a leopard or at uh, leopard days, and then was also qualified. So that's how she earned her 42 points this last year. Number four. Coming in fifth is field champion, grand champion, Circle M, Locust B. King George. This is a four-year-old male owned by Bridget Foster and Amara, uh, Amara and Terrence Tarasin- Tarasinski. That's I probably close. That? I yeah. think it's probably close. <laughs> From Rock Springs, Wisconsin, they yeah. have 41 points this year. Yeah, Locust Branch Obscene Gesture is the sire, and the dam is Locust Branch Rain Crow. Uh, the dog uh, went from registered to grand here this last year with three best in shows, had eight champion wins, two grand champion wins, and uh, two of which came at the, at RQEs for a total of 41 points, number five in the standings this year. Our number six dog here was a dog that's going to start out our next uh, series pretty strong by winning the grand champion male at Grand American uh, just a, a couple weeks ago. So getting a good start on it. But this past year, confirmation champion, grand champion, Dark Knight, Raz- Rising at Trek. This is a two-year-old male owned by Candace Gartland and uh, out of Louisa, uh, Louisa, Virginia. 36 points for for Trek. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm not really familiar with this dog here, but uh, when you look at the Sire Wabash River, two-timing Romeo, and then the dam, uh, field champion, confirmation champion, national dual champion, night champion, grand champion, 50 shades of gray. I think we've all heard of that dog, so uh, we shouldn't be surprised. It's probably, I've not seen this dog that I'm aware of, but I'll bet it's a pretty nice looking one uh, based on the pedigree there. Uh, that dog had seven champion wins uh, this last year, one of which came at the North Carolina State Championship. So yeah. Uh, 36 points uh, was good enough for sixth place for Leopard, Leopard Hounds this last year. Coming in seventh is confirmation champion, champion Circle M, Sky the Limit. Uh, this is a three-year-old female, uh, Abby McCorkle and Matt McCorkle in Elwood, Indiana own it. 33 points they ended with this past year. Yep, this dog sired by Grand Knight champion Fussell's Patch and is off of Remington's Rapid Fire Cabela. Had three champion wins, uh, uh, one of which came at uh, Leopard Days this last year. 33 points, seventh place. Here in eighth place, we have our top 10 breed winner from this uh, last year's winter classic. That's Grand Champion 3, Wild Ride Black Sadie, a six-year-old female owned by Tara Winters and Justin Taylor of Fremont, Ohio. 32 points they ended with. Yep, here's a uh, uh, half, half, uh, half sister, or half, yeah, half sister to the one in seventh place here off of Fussell's Patch and the dam here is Strikers Ball and Blitz. Dog had seven grand wins this last year. Two days, uh, was a two-day winner at BBOA Spring Show in Ashland, Ohio. Uh, and had a win at, at an RQE. She was the top 10 uh, breed winner in 2022. So that's going to be your defending champion right there. For Leopard Hounds, number eight. Yeah, coming in ninth here with 30 points is Grand Water Champion, Grand Champion 2, Wild Ride South Creek Queen, a six-year-old uh, female owned by Bandy Berlin and Melissa Berlin of Millington, Michigan. 30 points for this hound. Yep, this dog sired by Southern Slim. That's Grand Champion Southern Slim and is off a of Grand Champion Ebony Knight's Bella Bird, this dog had 10 grand champion wins, qualified for the world last year. 30 points, ninth place. Well, Bandy, we got another one for Bandy here. Tenth play, or tied for 10th here. So we got three dogs here tied for 10th with 30 points each. The first one's grand champion Backroads Road Lizard, a two-year-old male owned by Bandy. Again, from Millington, Michigan, 29 points. Yeah, our buddy uh, Jason Keen here is going to, uh, Keen's Big Moose, HTX. He's, that dog's the sire of this dog. Uh, the female is Wild Ride South Creek Queen. Dog had five champion wins, uh, seven grand champion wins this last year. One qualified for the world championship. But uh, yeah, just a young dog, two-year-old male, uh, tied for 10th place right, with 29 points. Yeah, out of Queen, who was, who was in ninth place, owned by Bandy. Uh, and uh, Bandy's yep. got a couple of litter mates yep. here, looks like. Also tied for 10th, grand champion Backroads Wild Rose, a two-year-old female owned by Bandy Berlin. Uh, out of Michigan, 29 points for Rose as well. Yeah, they're tied with 29 points. Had five champion wins, the same amount of champion wins, but has one grand champion wins as compared to seven by the other. But all it all boils down to the number of dogs defeated. Okay. So uh, 29 points there for Rose as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, the last dog in the uh, Leopard Top 10 is going to be confirmation champion, champion Smoking Aces Midnight Waterfall. A two-year-old female owned by Savannah McCollum and Buddy Ray of Pleasant Hill, Missouri. 29 points. There you go. And this dog sired by D Screaming Ace and is off of uh, confirmation champion, grand champion, Rowdy Ridge's Midnight MIA. This dog had two best in shows as a registered dog this last year. Uh, had seven champion wins and three, uh, uh, three category wins at RQEs last year.
Alan, we both had Daughter Pathfinder 2s now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service, and I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dogtra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. Moving right on into the blue tick uh, coonhound breed. Got 10 hounds in the top 10, as it should be, with uh, five males and five females. Uh, 220 as our high dog, and 54 will get you in the top 10. Uh, this year, I wonder how that compares to the past couple of years. Well, it's, uh, last year was uh, pretty similar. 54 this year, 51 last year, but before that, 41, and then in 2019, 32. 32 would have been a, under yeah. the older old yep. format without yep. the payout. So, yep. man, what a what a jump there. Yeah, and this has been a very competitive breed here, I feel like, in the last couple of years the Blue Ticks have, for sure. Yeah, and when we're going to get to the first dog here, you're going to hear hear a name that's going to become very familiar as we go through this Blue Tick breed and uh, kind of some impressive stuff we'll see as we go down through here. But the number one spot in the blue tick breeds going to Grand Champion 2, Rockin' W Surround Sound. A four-year-old male owned by Whitney and Debbie Killo of uh, Cabot, Arkansas, 220 points. Yeah, the kennel name is Dolby here, and the one you mentioned, the onset here of this uh, when we started the podcast here. But yeah, the dog is sired by Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 4, Rockin' W is Rock On, and is off a of World Show Champion, Grand Champion, Rockin' W is Blue Glamour Girl. This dog had uh, nine Grand Champion wins last year. Uh, was the grand champion winner at the Winter Classic, Arkansas State, Blue Tick Days, Tennessee State, BBCHA Fall Roundup, and was the top 10 breed winner in 2022. And uh, I'd say going in, he's going to be one of the favorites for sure. Absolutely. 220 points. Second place is going to be our champion winner from Autumn Oaks, uh, grand champion Cave Run Blue Molly, two-year-old female owned by Dean and Jerrica Statton of Little Mountain, South Carolina. They had 150 points. Yeah, I like to see this kind of a dog that I'm not really familiar with, but uh, uh, hey, uh, had a good showing this last year, 150 points for sure. This dog sired by Downing's Tree and Blue Stitch and is off a of grand champion Tree and Blue Black Betty Bama Lamb. Seven champion wins uh, last year uh, that included one at an RQE and was a champion winner at Autumn Oaks last year. So I'd say right there is where she got a good number of points. Champion winner at Autumn Oaks. Number two for Molly. Uh, coming in at third is going to be Grand Champion 3, Rockin' W's Blue Cover Girl. This is another four-year-old female owned by Angela and Jackson Cable of Connersville, Indiana. 114 points this year. Yeah, and this dog is a litter mate to the uh, number one dog, the Dolby dog we mentioned there, Rockin' W's Rock On, and the the uh, world champion mother, Rockin' W's Blue Glamour Girl. 17 Grand Champion wins this last year. One was an RQE, uh, and then a Grand Champion at the uh, uh, winner at the Georgia State Youth Championship. Yeah, I know uh, Jackson, Angela, and Kev and Kevin's son has started showing the dog show this dog at Youth Nationals. One of his age group there. So this well. this dog took over the his old Slinky dog, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the new Slinky. Yep. <laughs> new Slinky here. Yeah, yeah. Coming in fourth is uh, a dog here with a bunch of titles. Let's see: Grand Field Champion, Water Champion, Confirmation Grand Champion, Grand Night Champion. Grand Champion 5, Psycho Blue Spider HTX. This is an eight-year-old male owned by Lee Hogan of Rudolph, Wisconsin. 94 points. Yeah, next to the uh, Gilman's uh, Black and Tan, this dog is, comes in the close second with the decorated titles here. But uh, kudos to them. They put him in a lot of events. Uh, this dog sired by uh, Confirmation Champion, Grand Water Champion, Grand Night Champion, Grand Field Champion, Grand Champion, Mad Dog Psycho Sid. HTX and the dam is Grand Champion Rocky Hills Whiskey Lullaby. Dog had 19 Grand Champion wins last year. Two came at RQEs and was a winner at the Northern's Legends uh, show three days yeah. in a row. And that's over here at Bellevue, Michigan. Yeah, that's right. And that's the Legends uh, show is, uh, what is that, Dave Dean? And Ed Mead. Ed Mead, yeah. And yep. they always so have a really competitive show. There. They do. And some good turnouts. I forget when that show, when that event happens, but it's been pretty uh Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice deal there. Yeah, over absolutely. here at the Bellevue Club in Michigan. It'll it'll be coming up soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon. Coming in fifth place is Grand Champion the Coon Dog Lounge Whitland Coda. Uh, this is a one year old, uh, the youngest one I've seen yet. One year old female owned by Shayla Reichert of Jefferson, Wisconsin. Ninety four points. Yeah, tied with uh, tied with the uh, uh, Spider Dog up there. Uh, the sire is West Pals High Country Giz, and the dam is Gemma's Blue Runner. Dog had four uh, best in shows last year as a registered dog. 
So you, you may question, I'd like to see this dog's record, why there's four, you know, because three best in shows is usually going to finish. No dog. competition. No competition. There I you go. I was going to suggest that's probably what it was, but uh, so it even, so it wouldn't have got any points for that, but it still shows up on the record as four best in shows. Eight champion wins last night or last year, seven grand champion wins, one of which came at a qualifier. In sixth place is another one of these uh, Rock and W's dog. This is Grand Champion Rock and W's. I'll fly away. A two-year-old female owned by Whitney Killo and Hunter Shiflet of Cabot, Arkansas. Seventy-seven points for I'll fly away. Yeah, this makes the third of that same cross that is in the top ten standings of off of uh, Rock and W's. Rock on and the World Champion Glamour Girl dog had two best in shows as a registered dog. Had eight champion wins and a Grand Champion win. Uh, it was best female at the Georgia Youth State Championship, South Carolina State Championship, and the BBCHA Spring Roundup, where she earned all her points. 77 points, number six. And Hunter Shiflet, just another good young kid running the circuit right now. Got a bright future. For yeah, congratulations, year. Hunter. Uh, seventh place, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Forever Blue Tree Blowing Blake. This is a six-year-old male owned by Renee Hawk, Hawk of uh, Sardinia, Ohio. 70 points. Yeah, this is uh, Mark Hawk's wife, and Mark yep. does a lot of the showing on this dog, this Blake dog here. Sired by Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion Ammons Midnight Ace in his office, Stoll's Blue Hurricane Hannah. Dog had 21 Grand Champion wins last year. Uh, there again, 20, that's a lot, you yep. know, but here again, as a dog that didn't, you know, it didn't win auto, at Autumn Oaks or one of the bigger shows. It went to a bunch of, uh, a lot of smaller shows and earned its points. Uh, two of which were RQEs. Uh, one came at uh, Blue Tick Days last year. Got that uh, Hall of Fame title. I'm yep. sure that's, they were mm -hmm. making a run at that. Uh, eighth place here, Knight Champion, Grand Champion 3, SNS Blue Jinx. This is a three-year-old male owned by James Stinnett of Lake Village, Indiana. 60 points for a Jinx. Yeah, this, uh, this dog is, uh, let's see, back, back to my notes here. Grand Knight Champion, Muddy Creek Spikes Crow is a sire, and the dam is Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion, Vining Nail. A uh, dog had 23 grand champion wins last night to or last year to make up those 60 points. Ninth place, yet again, champion Rockin' W's Eyes on You. Uh, four year old female owned by Whitney Killo of Cabot, Arkansas. 57 points for this one. Yeah, here's another one of that from that same cross, you know, uh, Rock On and the uh, world champion Blue Glamour Girl, but that's just impressive. Super four impressive. You know, yeah, I don't know if that's ever happened. That'd be, uh, be something to look up and dig into, but. That is very impressive. Three champion wins last year, two that came at Blue Ticks Days, and one at the BBCHA Fall uh, Roundup. So in three three of those wins, you know, uh, defeated quite a few dogs. Nice dog, obviously. And then we have uh, our top 10 uh, breed winner from 2021, the first year where we had our payout, confirmation champion, grand champion three, Woods All Blue Blackjack, rounding out the top 10. This is a five-year-old male Owned by Katie, Brooklyn, and Jason Wood of Peru, Indiana. And they had 54 points. 54 points. Sired by Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion 3, Downings Tree, and All Blue Duke, HTX. And the dam is uh, Water Champion, Grand Knight Champion 2, Grand Champion 2, uh, Downings Tree, and All Blue Rebel, HTX. This dog had five grand wins. Uh, it was qualified for the world last year. Had uh, One of the wins came at the BBCHA Spring Roundup and was, in fact, the top 10 breed winner in 2021, two years ago. So comes in at number 10 this year and back again for uh, in with the uh, Blue Ticks, see if she can repeat there. Didn't, didn't uh, win any points for it, but Katie and Jack also were our 2022 uh, Youth National Champions in the senior division of the Ben Show. So. I think I said she. It's actually a male. It's a he. Yeah. 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 Moving on to our English coon hounds. We got 10 hounds, uh, six males and four females. Uh, we got talked about Bobby Sue earlier. She came in as a high dog with 257 points and 54 would have got you in the top 10 this year. Yeah, last year was 48 points to get in the for the English breed and get in the top 10. The year before that, it was way down 23. And then in 2019, uh, you know, they're just a little above that 30 points to get in. So last two years here has been pretty competitive again for the English dogs. Got off this year 54 points. Yep. And then bringing in uh, first place is a dog we talked about already, Grand Champion 2, Sideshow Bobby Sue. This is a three-year-old female owned by Jacob Brooks in Pounding Mill, Virginia. Yeah. 257 points. Sire is Night Champion, Grand Champion 2, Bear Branch Dawson. That's a dog that we've seen uh, show a lot. Uh, and then uh, Hall of, uh, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Bear Branch Bobby Lou is the dam there. This dog had eight Grand Champion wins, eight Champion wins last year. Uh, one came at an RQE, one at the Peach Classic. Georgia State Championship, Southern English Days, 
uh, Virginia State uh, English days and was the grand champion winner at Autumn Oak. So, and not just that, a lot of it, but even more impressive, uh, 14, 15 year old Jacob Brooks is the owner and handler. Number one for his, uh, for his breed. Congratulations. That's pretty impressive. Nice job, Jacob. Coming in second is grand champion confirmation, grand champion Whiskey River Rounder. This is a four year old male owned by Kenneth and Norma Dameron of Waynesboro, Virginia. 116 points for Rounder. Yeah, very nice young hound here. Four years old now, is sired by night champion, confirmation champion, grand champion for Whiskey River Peddler, another dog owned by Kenny Dameron that he used to show a lot. And the dam is Darko's Misty Dawn. This dog had five champion wins, five grand champion wins. Those wins came at a qualifier at the South Carolina State Championship, Alabama State, uh, Southern English Days, also at English Days and North Carolina State Championship. 116 points total. Pretty good run last year for Kenny and Rounder. Former Reserve World Champion, too. Yep, that's right. Uh, coming in third, Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Kentucky Mountain Cinderella Girl Crush. No stranger to this event. A six-year-old female owned by Rhonda Brown and Penny Turner of Walnut Cove, North Carolina. 108 points. Yep. This is a, you know, Girl Crush comes off of a pretty impressive, out of a pretty impressive litter sired by two world champions or uh, sired by a world champion, uh, show champion, night champion, confirmation champion, grand champion, Hall of Fame, Kentucky Mountain Diamond Cutter. Uh, that's a dog we used to see a lot back in the day that won a lot. And then the dam is another world champion. Uh, confirmation champion, grand champion, Kentucky Mountain Cinderella girl. This dog had five grand champion wins last year. Those wins came at a qualifier, was the grand champion winner at the Winter Classic last year in 2022. Uh, was a winner at Southern English Days and again at English Days and then was the top 10 breed winner in 2020, so uh, three years ago. So she will be back to see if she can... Uh, Get back up there again this year. But a uh, nice dog placing or ending up third in the standings this year. Fourth place is grand champion Dark Hollow, a poor man's roses. Uh, it's a two-year-old female owned by Haley Scase and Autumn Beeland of Livingston, Wisconsin. 95 points for roses. Here. Yeah, she, this dog sired by Wills Mountain Dusty Roads and is off of a two-time national grand night or grand champion winner Wills Mountain Blueberry or Blackberry Jam. Uh, the the Beelans own that dog as well. Three champion wins and five grand champion wins this last year. Qualified, uh, uh, those wins came at a qualifier. Heartland Classic uh, were a couple of the major wins there, and the rest were just uh, regular uh, club club shows. Yeah, we're all familiar with the damn there jam, but uh, Dusty Rhodes, this dog is the one that Jacob Brooks just handled at the past Grand American one. Uh, won his category on Friday in the in the regular show, and then won the overall in the uh, youth show with that oh, dog. Yeah. So yeah. another dog coming on too. Mm -hmm. uh, fifth place here, Grand Champion Confirmation Champion Chuck It, a two year old male owned by Megan O'Connor of Anamosa, Iowa. Yeah, Ninety kinda, points. Kind of like that name. Yeah. Simple Chuck It. Uh, this dog is sired by Confirmation Champion Grand Champion Moonlight's Most Wanted in Blue, and is off of uh, Grand Champion Confirmation Champion Southeastern Kentucky Mountain Charm. This dog had four best in shows this last year, had eight champion wins, three grand champion wins. Those wins came at a qualifier, the Arkansas State Championship, Redbone Days, Kansas State Championship, the Heartland Classic up in Wisconsin, the Iowa State Champion, and then American Redbone Days. Coming in sixth place, a dog that's been to the top ten in a couple of years, uh, grand champion Hall of Fame, Green Acres, Roscoe Willie. This is a nine-year-old male Owned by Alan Pfaff of Wayne City, Illinois. 76 points for Willie this year. Yep. Alan is a veteran in the shows. He's been showing for as long as I can remember. He was winning these shows and 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 still is. Lives over there close to Mike Seats. Dog sired by night champion, grand champion, Little Hoss, and is off a of grand champion, Missy Joe. This dog had 13 grand wins. Uh, one of the wins came at St. Jude, which uh, Alan has always been a big supporter of St. Jude. He's always there every year. Another win came at English Days. The rest were just the regular shows that we talked about. Yeah. Uh, seventh place, another dog here for Kenneth and Norma Dameron. This is confirmation champion, grand champion, Whiskey River, River Brandy, a four-year-old female. And uh, the Dameron's are out of Waynesboro, Virginia. 71 points for Brandy. And here we go again with another litter mate, uh, you know, to Kenny's other dog that placed about second there. The uh, Rounder dog. Yep. Uh, this dog is sired by Peddler and Misty Dawn. This dog had uh, seven champion wins and a grand champion win this last year. Those wins came at a qualifier, South Carolina State Championship, Alabama State, uh, the BBCHA Spring uh, Hunt in Ashland, uh, had a win at English Days, 
And then also at the West Virginia State Championship. Seventh place this year, 71 points. And eighth place is going to be Knight Champion, Water Champion, Grand Champion, Hall of Fame, Confirmation Champion, Down Creek's Blue Ranger. This is a four-year-old male owned by Justin Hofstetter of Pleasant Hill, Missouri. 62 points. Now, this dog is sired by Main Street Mr. Clutch. That's a Knight Champion dog. And the dam is Confirmation Champion, Field Champion, Grand Champion, Down Creek's Blue Heat. This dog had 14 Grand Champion wins. Uh, four of them were at RQEs. Uh, you, you know, you kind of wonder why they chase so many RQEs, but probably because it has the, the chances of earning more points may be greater. And RQE, more more dogs, there, more entries. entries yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but uh, still 62 points, and there's a dog that uh, earned his all the, uh, the, the long way, I guess, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, gets in at number eight. Uh, ninth place is going to be uh, URO1 Racing, Confirmation Grand Champion, Grand Champion 2, RH River Bottoms Born to Boogie Spot. This is a three year old male owned by Laura Bigley, Franklin Williams, and Tracy Kiker of St. Clair, Missouri. 57 points. Yeah, this dog sired by uh, River Bottom Country Boy can survive, and the dam is Heritage Triple E's Carbon Copy. This dog had two champion wins last year. And along with 10 grand champion wins to make up those, uh, to earn those 57 points. One, one good thing I'm glad about is I'm not going to be at Winter Classic this year for them to get on to me about the titles and pronouncing their dogs' <laughs> names. Yeah. So you can just direct that to Alan well, and you can uh, get with me afterwards. Hey, some, of these, <laughs> some of these titles that we're not so familiar with come, off, come from our all-breed uh, sports side, yep. you know. And, and, uh, and uh, Trevor, you really need to educate yourself a little bit more. <laughs> Tell <laughs> no, and so do and that. so do I. It seems we have several coonhounds that are. Uh, it's good to see some crossover. It is, it, there it is. is, and there's quite a bit actually. The more, and we we've, we've seen uh, numerous, uh, several of them already so far. But, yeah, uh, rounding out the English breed here, tenth place is Grand Champion North Stars Last Cowboy. This is a four year old. A uh, male owned by Cindy, Cindy Ausenbaugh of Genoa, Ohio, 54 points. Yeah, Cindy's always in the mix with some nice English dogs, you know, at, at all the all the shows around the country. 54 points here for uh, Cowboy, who is sired by Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Nagy's Carolina Creed, who is a dog that we've seen a lot at the shows, was in the top 10 last year, matter of fact. Uh, and the dam is Grand Champion PR North Stars, all gussied up. This dog had six champion wins. Those wins came at a qualifier the BBOA, or BBOA spring, uh, spring Hunt in Ashland, uh, Southern English Days, English Days, West Virginia State Championship, and then also the Ohio State Championship. Okay, moving on to, to one of our more competitive breeds here. And as we already talked about two of these hounds in the beginning when we talked about the top five point getters of the year. So we're about to look at a really impressive list of plot hounds right here. And it's broken down, five males, five females. And the number one dog is Confirmation Grand Champion, Grand Champion 3, Rag Mountain, Sweeter Than Honey. Uh, I know real quick we want to talk about uh, the point totals to get in, uh, 231 points, 231 points here for Honey. But then when we get to the 10th spot to crack the plot breed, it th took 38 points this year. Yeah, and before last year, that's down a little bit this year, which is uh, last year was a little over 44 points last year. But then in 2020, it was 23 points is all it took to get in for the breed. Actually, the... Uh, a couple of years before that. Uh, but last year, uh, the uh, the high points was 172. So uh, uh, pretty impressive for this uh, honey dog for uh, Katie and Jason Woodward. 231 points. The sire is a world show champion, Midnight Brindle Donner. And the dam is uh, a grand water champion, grand champion, confirmation grand champion. And another uh, title that we talked about that you need to learn what it is, Trevor. Yeah. C-A. <laughs> C-A, yeah. Uh, my dog, Honeybee. And then uh, this dog had six champion wins last year, 20 grand champion wins. Uh, two came at qualifiers. Uh, this dog had uh, earned points at the Georgia State, the Peach Classic, American Plot Association Days, uh, Virginia State Championship, Blue Tick Days, Plot Days, uh, North Carolina State Championship, Ohio State Championship. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say they did quite a bit of traveling last year and with a nice dog and uh, uh Earning or uh, picking up a lot of nice wins and and a bunch of top ten points, two hundred thirty one. Yeah, saw Katie and Jason everywhere this year, and yep. uh, Honey's a nice dog, and they got a couple other nice ones too. Uh, second place is going to be National Grand Champion, Grand Champion Midnight Brindled Bonfire. It's a four year old male owned by Scott and Connie Hogan of Winber, Pennsylvania. Two hundred sixteen points. Yeah, here we go again. It's uh, it's a half brother to uh, to Honey here. And uh, it's off of Brindle Donner, the world show champion. And then the dam is field champion, night champion, grand water champion, grand champion to 
late night Southern Scarlet. That was a dog owned by Corey Paul and his wife up here in Michigan. That uh, dog did a lot of winning as well. So he had uh, two champion wins, seven grand champion wins this last year. Uh, they, some of the wins they got came at the Virginia State Championship, the BBCHA Spring uh, Hunt, uh, the Pennsylvania State Championship Plot Days, and then was obviously the uh, or was the uh, 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 grand champion winner at Autumn Oaks. Coming in third place is a litter mate to, to uh, Bonfire. That's confirmation champion, grand champion five, the Midnight Gambler, a four-year-old male owned by Hannah Cable of Cleves, Ohio. 130 points for that duo this year. Yeah, here again, uh, Donner is the sire here, and uh, Scarlet is the uh, is the dam here. So litter mate to the number two dog there that we mentioned in the standings. 15 grand champion wins here. Uh, qualified last year, uh, earned uh, points at Plot Days, the Ohio State Championship, and then also at the BBCHA Spring Hunt. Fourth place is going to be Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Tracking Penny Girl Phillips. It's a three-year-old female owned by Clint and Caitlin Phillips of Ostego, Michigan, just here close by, 74 points. Yep, this dog's sired by Polly's tough foot, Mr. R.C. Jake, and the uh, two, and the dam is Big Creek, Samantha. This dog had 11 grand champion wins. Four of them came at qualifiers there again, probably chasing those bigger entry sh uh, shows. Uh, and one that came at the Northern Legends hunt that we talked about, the Dave Dean and Ed Mead tribute hunt up here at Bellevue. 74 points, pretty impressive, really. Yeah. Fifth place is going to be grand champion two, confirmation champion, Rag Mountain, different kind of fine. This is a four-year-old female. Owned by Megan O'Connor of Anamosa, Iowa, 62 points. Yeah, sired by Grand Champion County Line Mountain Music and off of Late Night Star. This dog had five champion wins uh, last year, eight grand champion wins. Uh, qualified for the World Championship, uh, earned points at the Kansas uh, State Championship, the Illinois State, and then also at American Redbone Days made up some of those 62 points. Got another litter mate here uh, to... Uh, to Bonfire and Gambler up there. This is champion Zul Taggerson, a four-year-old male owned by Corey and Sasha Hall of Brant, Michigan, 54 points. Yep, here again we mentioned uh, the world champion Brindle uh, Donner is uh, making a very good showing here in the in the top 10 for plots. Uh, and the female, again, is a Southern Scarlet dog we mentioned. Uh, six champion wins here for uh, this dog. Two came at qualifiers. Uh, also, some of those wins came at the Michigan State and Plot Days this last year. Four of the top six sired by Donner. Great accomplishment. Very, very impressive. Seventh place, Grand Champion 5 at Diggy's Blue Ridge Mountain Rudy. This is a two-year-old male owned by Katie Allison of Hudson, North Carolina. 48 points for Rudy this year. Sired by world champion as well, but this time it's going to be my dog I'm calling Dibs won the world championship. Your first year at uh, Marshall Tine, right. Iowa, yeah. the first world championship is where he won that one. Uh, my dog I'm calling Dibs, HTX2, uh, and uh, is grand champion four, confirmation champion Suncrest Significant Promise is the dam here. This dog had 20 grand wins this last year. Uh, one of them came at a qualifier, but outside of that, uh, did it the the long way again, uh, just going to a, a lot of the local shows and and uh, earned all those points doing that. Here's the Hogan's again, uh, eighth place with champion Midnight Brindle Jenna, a uh, two-year-old female owned by Connie Hogan of Winber, Pennsylvania. 40 points for Gina this year. Yeah, well, they're breeding a lot to uh, the Donner dog, obviously, you know, but here's one that is not this one. They sired off a Grand Field champion, Grand Water champion, Night champion, Grand champion, Midnight I Am Gino, HTX. The dam is Midnight Brindled Burnin's Flame. This dog had three best in show wins last year, and one of them came at Autumn Oaks. So that's where this dog earned the majority of its points this last year. In ninth place is Knight Champion Grand Champion Illinois Farmland Loctite. It's a four-year-old male owned by Floyd Ledman of Riverton, Illinois. 39 points for the duo this year. Yeah, sired by the Grand Knight Champion dog Burnett's Rooster and is off of a Grand Knight Dam Percy's Clinch Mountain Betsy. This dog had one best in show last year, eight champion wins, uh, and one Grand Champion wins made up those uh, those uh, 39 points that came out of qualifier and then also at the Missouri State Championship for Loctite. And rounding out the top 10 in the plot breed is Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Allison Still Miracle. This is a seven-year-old female owned by Kay Allison of Old Fort, North Carolina, 38 points. Yeah, uh, this dog sired by Grand Champion Suncrest standing on the promise and is off of confirmation. Grand Champion M&M Sideshow Keep the Faith. 
This dog had 13 grand champion wins this last year and uh, for uh, Kay Allison. Finished 10th. Uh, finished Hey, Trevor, how about those wait times in the registration queue these days? Uh, that department done an awesome job cutting down on call queue wait times, shortening the length of time between emails, and the chat feature is still a short, valuable option. And those those times have went down to nothing. Uh, these days, uh, there is hardly any wait time at all. Right. And you're able to get a hold of those departments from 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time now, Monday through Friday. Moving on to your favorite breed here, the Red Bone Coon Hounds. Yeah. Uh, the old breed of choice, but uh, the Red Bones this year, they have 11 hounds that got invited to the to the top 10 this year at Winter Classic. Seven males and four females. And uh, to get into the top 10 this year, 400 was the high dog. We talked about uh, Lucky, Beth Jenkins' dog earlier. 32 would have got you in the top 10, though. Yep, 32, you know, and that's uh, just slightly higher than the last several years, uh, 24 in 26, uh, you know, in the last couple of years. So that's that's pretty consistent there. But the top end of it, uh, 400 for the top dog, number one dog, that is over over more than twice than what it's basically ever been. 198 in 2021, 68 in 20, and 66 in 19. Yeah. So that just goes to, it's pretty impressive. That dog did a lot of winning. That top dog did to earn all those points for sure. What a run. What a run. Crazy. And, and talking to that first dog, first place in the Redbone breed, grand champion two, Diamond Grand Champion, Confirmation Champion, Skyline's Push My Luck, a three-year-old male owned by Beth Jenkins of Culpeper, Virginia. 400 points. Yeah, this dog sired by Code Red Timber Cutter. That's a Grand Champion, too. And the dam is Grand Champion Hoo Hoo Hollow Aerial Assault. This dog had five champion wins, 13 Grand Champion wins last year. So if you look at that as compared to a lot of the other dogs, it's, it's you know, it's very consistent. There's other dogs that have had that many wins or close to it. Sure. But it is the magnitude, it's the events and the number of dogs that this dog defeated is what is so impressive. Yep. And she got her wins, she obviously qualified for the world. Uh, the dog was the champion male winner at Georgia State uh, uh, both days. Grand American. Both Grand days. American, I'm yeah, sorry, sorry. Grand American, yep. Uh, champion winner at the Winter Classic last year. Uh, did get a win at the Georgia State Class or a Georgia State Championship. Peach Classic winner, Alabama State, Redbone Days, Virginia State, Train Walker Days, Michigan State, Iowa State. Uh, both days, I guess, at Iowa State, maybe, or uh, you've got two Iowa States on here, so I'm not just sure. Just wanted to emphasize yeah, one the day. Iowa okay. State's a big win. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just very impressive. 400 points there for Push My Luck. Uh, congratulations to Beth Jenkins. The next dog coming in second here is no stranger to the top 10 uh, uh, bench show. we got Grand Champion 2, Wabash River Marble, Marlboro Red, a six-year-old male owned by Andy Emery of Lake Lure, North Carolina, 150 points. Yep, this dog sired by Thor's Red Hot Thunder, and the dam is grand champion Wabash River. Hail on heels. This dog had five grand wins that came at a qualifier, had two grand uh, wins at the Grand American last year, was a grand champion male winner both days, uh, earned points at the Peach Classic, the North Carolina State Championship, was the top 10 breed winner in 21 and 22. So this dog's coming back uh, to defend for the third year and uh, be interesting to see how that shakes out this year. Coming in third is Grand Champion 4, Rimfire's call sign Chaos Actual. This is a three-year-old male owned by Katrina Henderson and Steve Hatch of Tully, North New York. They had 76 points this year. There you go, a New York dog sired by uh, champion, confirmation grand champion Rimfire's Me and the Moon. And then the dam is con, uh, confirmation champion Rim Fires more than Moxie. This dog had 22 grand champion wins, four of them at qualifiers last year. 76 total points. Probably a good indication here. She's in New York. Not a lot of major events within uh, reasonable driving distance for them. RQE is probably the biggest shows around our area. Right, right. Coming in fourth place, grand champion Wabash River, a whole lot of Rosie. This is a four-year-old female owned by Andy and Keith Emery of Lake Lure, North Carolina, 63 points. Yep, confirmation grand champion, tree rising American road trip is the sire to this dog. The dam is confirmation champion, grand champion, Stone Nickel, Texas Tornado. Two champion wins uh, last year, uh, qualified for the world champion, was the champion female at the Grand American uh, but uh, they're uh, just at those events alone is where she earned all those points. So that means she defeated a lot of dogs. Fifth place is grand champion Little Freed's Red Tulip. 
a two-year-old female owned by Megan and Sarah Frederick of Memphis, Missouri, 58 points. Yeah, Pruitt Salt River Rebel is the sire here. The dam is grand champion Pruitt Salt River uh, Reina. This dog had eight champion wins and six grand champion wins last year, one of them that came at a qualifier. 58 total points. We've got another uh, Andy Emery on another dog here. Confirmation champion, champion Wabash River Lost Highway. This time it's a two-year-old male owned by Andy and Keith Emery, Curtis Elburn, Nikki Elburn. Lake Lure, North Carolina, 55 points. Sired by grand champion two, Wabash River, Marlboro Red, who's number two in the standings there. And the dam is grand champion, Wabash River, a whole lot of Rosie. We've uh, heard those number names. Four yep, already. number four. Yep. So here's a pup off of that cross. Had a best in show with four champion wins last year that came at a world qualifier. Was the best male of show at the Winter Classic last year. Uh, earned points at Red Bone Days and then also at the North Carolina State Championship. Moving on to seventh place is confirmation champion, grand champion three, B's Smoking Red Bullet, a five-year-old male owned by Lindsey Morrow of Shreveport, Louisiana, 40 points. Yeah, Shreveport. I always have good memories of Shreveport. World Championship down there in September is hot in Shreveport, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, grand, grand Field Champion, Grand Champion two, confirmation grand champion, Grand River, OK Red Chief is the sire to this dog. And the dam is champion Shelton's Red Bell Pepper. Uh, this dog had 17 grand champion wins this last year. Three came at qualifiers, uh, the Louisiana State Championship, Red Bone Days, Texas State, and U.S. Red Bone Days is where this dog earned its points. In eighth place with 39 points is going to be champion Durbin's Dazzling Dancer. This is a five-year-old female owned by Allie Durbin of Adamsville, Tennessee. Sidearm, the Rusty Zipper is a sire, and the dam is grand champion. Critter Creek's Ain't She Sweet. She had three wins and, and uh, one that came at St. Jude last year for a grand total of 39 points, number eight in the standings. In ninth place, we have grand champion, confirmation champion, Grand Rivers Ride Boldly Ride. This is a six-year-old male owned by Marissa Turner and Abby Weber of Locust Grove, Ohio, 35 points. Yep, the sire is Grand Field Champion, Grand Champion 2, Confirmation Grand, Grand River OK's Red Chief. We mentioned him a little bit ago. This would be a half, uh, half uh, a, a brother to that other dog. Uh, and the dam is Grand River's OK, Miss Millie. Dog had uh, uh, five champion wins and four grand wins, one that came at a qualifier. And looks like we got a couple of dogs here tied for 10th place with 32 points. The first is water champion, grand champion four, Outlaw Jebediah. It's a five-year-old male owned by Kelly and Corey Norton of Herdland, Missouri. 32 points. Yes, and this dog is sired by a uh, just PR dog, PNN Salt River Wild Bill, and the dam is Salt River Lucky J. This dog had eight grand champion wins last year and uh, just did it at the, at the local shows. Earned 32 points and a spot in the standings. And also there tied for 10th is water champion, champion URO1, race A, Emerald Grand Confirmation Champion, Rimfire in TNT, Star Spangled Spot. A uh, four-year-old female owned by Tammy Rogers and Danielle Moore of Gillette, Pennsylvania, 32 points. Yep, here's another breed that the bottom ones had uh, tied for 32 points, so we actually have 11 red bones in the, that will move on to the top 10, or that are eligible anyways. Hope we'll, we'll see them here at the Winter Classic Show. Uh, the sire is confirmation champion, water champion, grand field champion, grand night champion, grand champion, dry hills, copper still. The dam is confirmation champion, champion, rim fires more than moxie. This dog had four best in shows last uh, year, five champion wins. That included wins at a qualifier and then also the New York State Championship. You know, here a little while ago, we mentioned uh, uh, a dog can uh, might not have competition had four best in shows. One may not be competition is why you see more than three. But actually, it takes the way the point system is set up now. you got to have uh, a minimum of uh, you could be, uh, three best in shows is not going to finish a dog. And you'd have right. 90 points in. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yep. And there you just mentioned Moxie, the dam of this 10th uh, place dog, mm. also had one up towards the top, had two in the, in the top 10. So right. uh, Moxie with a couple right. pups in the top 10. And now we get to our Tree and Walker Coonhelm breed. Uh, ten, ten hounds made it through, four males and six females. Uh, 186 was the high dog this year. Uh, probably a little bit lower than, than normal there, just probably because the wins are so spread out in such a competitive division. But 89 is the low dog. It takes 89 points to get in the top 10 of the Walker breed. Yeah, and last year, that's pretty comparable to last year. It was 82 points, but before that in, in uh, 20 and, and uh, 2019, it was like the cutoff was closer to uh, mid-50s. 58 one year, 56 another year. So 
Yeah, nevertheless, 186 points to uh, leads the standings this year for train walkers. 89 to get in. If you look at the other six breeds, 54 is the, is the second highest point total to crack the top 10. Yep. 89 in the walker breed. Very competitive division here. Yep. Should be proud of yourself just to make it to the top 10 here. Uh, our first place dog this year, as far as accruing points, is confirmation champion, grand champion two, Southern All-American Ruger, a four-year-old male owned by Tiffany and Mark Atkins of Branchland, West Virginia. 186 points. There you go. Congratulations to Tiffany. She's at all the shows, is is competing with the best, you know, and has some very nice dogs. And here she's got one at the top of the standings with uh, with Ruger this year. So congratulations to her and Mark. Uh, this dog is sired by Second Wind's Impressive Playboy, and the dam is grand champion Second Wind Syndicated. This dog had four champion wins and nine grand wins last year. Uh, that came at a qualifier, uh, Southeastern Tree Walker Days, the Peach Classic. West Virginia State Championship, the Kentucky State Championship, and then, of course, a couple, uh, probably uh, maybe a couple local shows as well. 186 points. Uh, second place, grand champion, confirmation champion, Drake's Windstorm. This is a young female yet, two-year-old female, owned by Natalie, Isabel, and Hunter Atkins of Astoria, Illinois. 172 points. Yeah, uh, we see Natalie uh, has shown a lot of nice dogs and in, in, for a long time. And this is just another one. Windstorm is sired by Grand Champion West Fork River Terror of the Town. The dam is National Grand Champion, Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 3, Red Eagle, Second Wind. This dog had a uh, had two best in shows last year in the registered category, had the eight champion wins and then six grand champion wins. That came at a qualifier. It was best female of show at the Grand American uh, Redbone Days, Tree and Walker Days, the Heartland Classic, West Virginia State Championship, Plot Days, Missouri State, and the BBCHA Fall Roundup. Those are uh, the events where she earned her points last year. Very, very good year again. Uh, coming in third is going to be Grand Champion 2, Confirmation Champion, Skylines, Stay in Your Lane. This is a two-year-old male. Owned by Megan O'Connor and Beth Jenkins, uh, Anamosa, Iowa, 165 points. Yeah, sired by Grand Champion 3, West Fork River Rock, this town. And the dam is Grand Champion 3, Confirmation Champion, Heart Throbs, Terrorizing Addiction. This dog had a best in show as a registered dog last year. And then the eight champion wins, finished a grand, then went on to get seven grand champion wins, was the best in show at the Grand American last year. Uh, had earned points at the Arkansas State, Redmond Days, American Leopard Hound Days, the Heartland Classic, and the Minnesota State Championship. Fourth place here is Grand Champion Laurel Valley Boondock Bombshell. It's a three-year-old female owned by Kelly and Dave Myers of New Florence, Pennsylvania, 135 points. Yep, Kelly used to show the sire to this dog a lot, and one of the most, uh, probably the biggest win this dog had was the world title. You know, it was the world show champion, Laurel Valley Backwoods Boondocker. The dam is confirmation champion, grand champion, Canyon Creek, Little Meggy. This dog had eight champion wins last year. So it was just competed in the champion category. I was a champion female uh, winner at the Winter Classic last year, uh, earned points at Black and Tan Days, and then also the West, West Virginia uh, State Championship. 135 points. Good enough for number four. Coming in fifth place is a grand champion Hall of Fame, Cherry Creek Exotica. This is an eight-year-old female owned by Candy Johnson of Lincoln, Missouri, 108 points. Yeah, one of the older dogs in the standings here uh, this year. This dog is sired by Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion, Alexander's Gold Rush, etc. The dam is Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Cherry Creek Confetti. This dog had 38 Grand Champion wins last year. The biggest show was the Kansas State Championship. But yeah, 38 Grand Champion wins. Pretty Just went to a lot of shows. Finished out that Grand Champion Hall of Fame yep, title. Yep, running the roads. Yep, sure did. Uh, sixth place, we went from an eight-year-old to a one-year-old here. This is Grand Champion 2, Herlock's Slick and Wild Buddy 2, a one-year-old male owned by Easton and Dale Herlock of Parker, Kansas, 104 points. Yeah, Dale Herlock is a name I don't see. That's a guy I met when I first started here out in Kansas, but uh, somebody I haven't seen in a long time. But uh, this dog is sired by Grand Champion Herlock's Slick and Wild Scar. Dam is Grand Champion 4, Herlock's Slick and Wild Fly. This dog had three best in shows. Eight champion wins and ten grand champion wins last year. Two of those wins came at the Missouri and the Kansas State Championships. Well, we talked about Jacob a little bit earlier, but here's uh, here's his younger sister Jordan coming into the top ten of the Walker breed with her hound grand champion five second wins Barnabas. It's a seven year old male that Jordan owns from, and uh, they're out of Pound and Mill, Virginia. Hundred points here for Barnabas. There we go. Second wins impressive Playboy. I think we've heard that name before here on this list. Second wins full throttle is the dam. 
Dog had 21 grand champion wins last year. Came at a qualifier. Uh, the Georgia Youth uh, uh, State Championship was a grand champion winner there. And then also at uh, Southeastern Tree and Walker Days, a couple of the bigger events. Coming in eighth place is champion Mason Dixon. She's a little sassy. The three-year-old female owned by Joe Moore and Kelly Myers of Spragues, Pennsylvania. 94 points for sassy this year. Yeah, and here again, the dog's uh, sired by the world champion uh, Laurel Valley Backwoods Boondocker. And the dam is confirmation champion, grand champion, uh, PR Canyon Creek, Little Meggie. So this is a, a full full litter mate to the uh, bombshell, dog. bombshell dog. Yep, this dog had a best of uh, best male of show, seven champion wins. Those wins came at the biggest one was the best female of show at the Grand American last year. And then uh, the rest of the wins came at uh, three different RQEs and then also the Pennsylvania State Championship. So congratulations to Joe Moore. Joe is one of the guys that was, uh, when I first started, he was one of the kids at Youth Nationals that I remember. So good to see Joe is still very active. He just recently got married. So congratulations to him and Kelly Myers and his wife and everybody. Top 10. Well, hopefully we'll see them here in a couple of days. Coming in ninth place is champion, second wins True Colors. This is a two-year-old female owned by Janice Hunter of Branford, Florida. 93 points for Colors. Yeah, Janice's dog is uh, sired here again by Impressive Playboy. And second wins full throttle is the dam. Uh, three champion wins. Those wins came at a RQE. Uh, a, was the champion winner at Grand American last year. It was also a champion winner at the... Uh, in the youth show portion of the Grand American last year. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Janice. She has, she's always has a long way to drive being from the state of Florida, you know, but uh, she is at a lot of these shows. Always good to see her, and hopefully we'll see her there with True Colors. And rounding out the top ten and completing our field for the top ten bench show for this year, Grand Champion 3, Night Moves Jolene. This is a four-year-old female owned by Haley, Katie, and Josie Lewis of White Pine, Tennessee. 89 points for Jolene. There you go. Uh, here again. Playboy is the sire. Second win's impressive. Playboy, second win syndicated is the dam. So uh, this is a litter mate to uh, another dog that we have in the standings here. I think the first place dog. First place the dog. dog. There you go. There we go. Dog had seven champion wins last year, 16 grand champion wins, uh, one, one of which came at a qualifier last year. So yep. that rounds out the top 10 for yeah. Dream Walker. Great group of tree and walkers, like you said. Playboy, four pups out of in the top ten out of two different crosses. Uh, syndicated was the dam of two of those pups, Ruger and Jolene. And Full Throttle was the dam of the other two, and that was Barnabas and uh, the Colors dog. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, just going over this list, I don't want to rush things. I know we need to cut this off and everything. But if if you when we see the sires and the dams and everything, you know, it it's really – it really speaks for uh, the breeding programs that are out there and the good the good breeding practices that uh, these folks are uh, are are uh, putting into their hounds and everything out here and, and and these are the results of it and the quality that you see at these shows is just very good absolutely very good and I think we're going to see anybody who's around at the at the Winter Classic this year come by watch it anybody participating good luck to you this is going to be a heck of a show we got. Uh, we got good judges on tap. We got a good group of dogs. Uh, I think Rodney and Mary Bergbauer and uh, the third uh, Catherine Baxter. Catherine Baxter oh. will be judging it, and it's going to be a it's going to be a good show to watch. It's going to be a top quality dog. There's some really nice ones there. Yeah. So congratulations to each one, everybody. They got a dog in the top ten this year, and good luck in the top ten show. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and to like and follow UKC Hunting Ops on Facebook and Instagram.